Hey my loves, welcome back to Bahati Life YouTube channel and my living room. It is a blessing, it is an honor to be able to shuffle cards and pull the charts for you guys today. We are clearly going to be talking about this Taurus new moon. I'm not gonna lie, as soon as I pull the chart um, and saw that it was in Taurus and remembered that it was in Taurus, I was like, ugh. <laughs> I'm not gonna lie to you guys and this is because I've been talking about how Taurus energy has really been swinging in a lot of crazy directions lately in ways that as an astrologer and as an intuitive and someone who respects spirit and respects divine timing and the divine plan it it's so it's so sketch you know what I mean and I I say that because I'm a human being you know what I mean? The human side of Jess, your friend, you know, looks at the charts and looks at the energy and it's just like sketchy, you know, it's so sketchy. But then when I sit with the spiritual side of Jess, your astrologer, your intuitive, and when I sit with the divine and I connect in with that, then I'm like, well, you know, there's always a divine reason for everything. There's divine planning and everything is as it should be, but it doesn't take away from the fact that I look at the chart and I'm just like, mm, initially. Now, I don't want to freak anybody out. You guys know I do not operate in fear. I don't like to, you know, incite panic ever. I know that a lot of you guys trust me and trust my judgment and trust my predictions. And I will always honor that. I will always protect that. So there's nothing for us to be have fear for, right? But, you know, we, we do want to have an honest conversation always and forever. Um, I know that I just dived right into this message for, you know, for this video. So for those of you guys that are brand new, my name is Jessica Alexandria. I'm the creator of Bahati Life Apothecary and now Queen Bee Homestead. And um, I'm a professional astrologer, tarot, and intuitive reader. So thank you so much for joining me today. For those of you guys that are old friends and family, of me and Bahati Life YouTube channel. Welcome back, dude. It's such an honor. I do have the chart pulled up on my left. I have the cards in my hands that I'm getting them ready right now. So this is going to be the, the energetic merging and blending of astrology and tarot so that you know exactly what you can expect for the new moon. But as you guys know, I say this all the time, if you know how to work with the planets, you can make them work for you and not against you. And that is going to be huge and major because you can, of course, use the new moon in order to manifest miraculous, incredible intentions over your life if you feel empowered to do so. And my goal is to make sure that you do feel that way. So I do have the chart pulled up here and I will be working with my intuition and pulling the chart and we will see what comes up. So for those of you guys that don't know, new moons are huge times for being really quiet initially and connecting with your darker self, your intuitive self, your magical self, the receptive side of yourself that wants to manifest usually some type of beautiful beginning, usually wants to plant a seed. I always look at the new moon as this hole that you dig in your backyard, all right? And what are you going to do with this hole? Are you going to plant a tree there? Are you going to seal it up and put a lake? Are you going to bury a dead body? I mean, like, I know that that sounds crazy, but like, what is your intention? What do you want to do with this hole in your backyard? So the new moon, and it's funny too, because a hole in the backyard or a hole in the dirt makes a lot of sense for Taurus energy. Taurus is naturally connected to the earth and tangible. And Taurus is also ruled by Venus. So it's what is beautiful. It's what you are aesthetically attracted to, what you want your life to look like. So what do you want to plant into this hole in the ground? Cancel out everything else that's going on in the world. Honestly, just fuck it, it's noise. What do you want for your world? What do you want for your finances? What do you want for your stability? What do you want for your comfort, your lifestyle? Do you want luxury? Do you wanna go camping butt naked in the woods? You know, what? what is your vibe? So this new moon is seriously the time to be quiet with yourself and deeply reconnect with spirit, with the divine, with your higher self and ask you, your, yourself those really important questions. Do I see myself on social media? Do I see myself 
prioritizing taking photos and posting it for the internet like what what is the what is the vision so this new moon is big big time on connecting with those aspects within yourself in order to absolutely create and ultimately manifest this vision that you see for yourself i do not want any one of you guys to do this willy-nilly i hate the fact that i just said willy-nilly but i don't want you guys to just do it and you know make your life just kind of like throwing darts at a dartboard i i believe in some certain level of spontaneity but i also feel it's so important to have a plan and to have a vision and to be divinely guided this full, this new moon you guys spirit is going to come through in remarkable ways to remind you of how it is constantly finding new ways to speak to you. That's in repetitive numbers. That's in the birds or animals or things, the totems that is that you're seeing in your day-to-day -day life. Are you listening to them? Are you respecting them? Does it make sense to you? Are you vibing with it? Or are you second guessing yourself, operating from anxiety, doubt, or allowing other people to control your destiny? So why am I saying all of this? Because Uranus, guys, and I, I'm the biggest broken record, but you guys know, I can never lie when I pull the chart. I can never lie when it comes to sharing my intuition. And the biggest thing that I keep seeing here is the fact that these planets are not going anywhere, okay? They're not going anywhere. The energy that we've been sitting in for the last two and a half years, for the most part, has been pretty tumultuous. All of us astrologers, me as an astrologer, me as an intuitive, has said this every week, all right? For the last two years. Why? Because it's so important. Why? Because it's a changing in history and we're in the midst of it. So instead of pretending like that's not happening and only focusing on like, oh yeah, the, you know, the best is right around the corner or this is happening or, you know, it's going to end. It's not, you know, it's, it, we're not there yet. There is something ma major happening when it comes to finances, when it comes to our society, when it comes to the environment, when it comes to the world and these transits don't go away in 365 days, they don't go away in one month. So if we are a part of this and you are a part of this, you can't run from it. You wanna face it, you wanna confront it, and you wanna be a part of the transformation. You wanna put your, your opinion into the opinion box and say to the universe, okay, if the ground that I've been sitting on has been crumbling under my feet in one area of my life or rocking, rocketing me up in one area, another area of my life, this is what I want it to look like. If it's going to break down, this is how I'm going to rebuild it. And I do want to tell you guys, Taurus is the energy of replenishment. I, I strongly believe that. This is not just for earth signs. It's not just for water signs. It's also for fire and air. Like this is going to be the sign and the time for you to replenish your energy. How do you do this? This is by making sure that you're comfortable, making sure that you're stable, making sure that you're safe. What is important and valuable to you? That is what needs to be in your life. And if it's not there already, girl, boy, man, woman, lady, it's time for you to manifest that. This is the new moon to get that on and popping, right? There's no need for any of us. There's no need for you to be walking through this earth feeling like, you know, thirsty for something, wanting more for yourself. Spirit is like, literally speak up, talk to us about it. You're going to be empowered. It's going, you are going to be enabled. You are going to be supported, but you have to at least have the courage the bravery and your last bit of strength for some of you guys to just speak it out or whisper it out and put it out into the cosmos, put it out into the cosmic ocean so that you are a part of this great wave that's sweeping through, you know, our, our, throughout history. So yeah, I mean, that's a mouthful, but it, it, it should feel empowering. My goal is to empower empower the people. My goal is to provide the message. My goal is to give that message with truth and not to, you know, be overly optimistic and overly positive if there's no need for it. If anything, I'm more critical than I am anything else. Okay. Everybody in my intimate life knows that everyone knows to come to me for the truth and I'm not here to sugarcoat or anything like that. So yeah. So first cards that are standing through and stepping up and I'm working with the tarot of sexual magic guys, not because I felt intuitively called to it, but because to be honest with you, it was right here, but I believe in divine timing. So we're here for it. Let me just kind of ring these bells real quick. 
Spirit, speak to us, speak to me, allow me to channel with clarity and allow the viewer, the reader, the listener, the receiver to have discernment, to know where this message applies to them, for them, if at all. It's funny, I am intuitively seeing someone coming through and taking cement and buffing it out, smoothing it out. It's also good, I'm hearing the word polymer. Polymer, I don't know what that is, but it's kind of like um, over, it's spirit is kind of, I'm seeing overseeing, some spirit is overseeing something being smoothed out, something being created. I'm also, spirit is showing me the foundation that goes on within. Um, it's like, um, like if you were making a sculpture, it's like the bare bones, like the wood, like the, the, the iron that goes underneath. We've already, they're showing me like they're kind of pulling it back. They're also shaping some type of metal or fish. To me, it looks like, um, chicken wire. <laughs> I use that in order to keep my chickens in and keep the cats and the, uh, coyotes and the hawks out. So, but really what this is, is it helps to um, shape this sculpture. There's already been enough cement, clay or something put over it. Now you're just kind of like scraping and shaping and somewhat spirit is also saying, um, don't look back. <laughs> I'm getting this really interesting vision of Titanic and Someone's like literally someone's letting go of something so that they were just I don't they were really questioning can I ever let this go will it ever let go of me I just heard the word hoarder it's this energy of like something that you almost feel not ashamed of but like you're holding on to this not because it serves a purpose but because you're truthfully you're hurt like truthfully it's the part of you that there should, Spirit is saying, there should be no shame when it comes to this, why you held on to this, why you felt so bad holding on, you know, there's, there's a reason for it and there's no shame. There should be no shame is what Spirit is saying. Um, now, shame, it's funny because I'm seeing the word shame transforming into the word being shaped, something is being shaped. So the shame is being shaped and transformed into something that gets to be sculpted into something beautiful and epic and timeless that's the word it's, i'm also seeing like luxury which makes sense taurus rules designer goods you know like nice like not to say that things that aren't designer aren't good because i've seen many designer things that are trash and just tacky i'm gonna be honest but this is something that's very very nice it's very timeless it, it stands the test of time it, it's worth it for a reason you know it's status it's um spirit is talking about sarcasm some of you guys are using sarcasm or listening to sarcasm as a way of people expressing like a real truth spirit is saying that this is ultimately a little unacceptable they want someone or you to be transparent and to be vulnerable with your communication instead of hiding behind humor. It's a defense mechanism, let it go. <laughs> they spirit said, let it go. Um, if, you're in, if you're dealing with someone who does this, there's, there's no, spirit just wants better for you and for, for, the, for the communication. Um, they're also mentioning the idea of patience and being some things are just unacceptable and you can forgive someone and understand why they're doing it, but also not tolerate it. Um, okay, so now I wanna to talk to you guys about the cards that I pulled. We have the Queen of Cups. I don't know if you guys are gonna be able to see this, but just know that I'm trying my best. Progress, not perfection, am I right? <laughs> I saw that on the meme, so it's gotta be real. All right, uh, I forgot what this is. Can you guys see it? It is the Five of Pentacles. <laughs> oh, 
goodness. Okay, and then we have Page of Wands reversed. So, at the time of the Taurus new moon, Spirit wants to talk to you guys about, I don't know why this is funny to me, but it just tickles me right now. They want to talk to you about stability and immaturity. Ooh, girl, I just heard the word rupture, like some, something is going to be ruptured. Blah, 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 blah. I don't like that. So something is just doing overproducing. Um, this is actually kind of giving me bad vibes in my knees and my legs, my lower legs. Some of you guys, um, you've been, I've been talking about this for a minute about um, people taking care of their health. If you don't take care of your health, you're going to feel, you know, the repercussions of it. Um, this, I don't know what this is. It's kind of reminding me of when I did the Gabby Petita reading and how trigger alert, um, how I was channeling for that. And I said, spirit was like, so when I, when I feel certain things, um, I feel them in my body and I have not experienced many health conditions, nor have I experienced death or anything like that. So when I feel it, I'm doing my best to articulate the feeling that I am getting and it can overwhelm myself. Like it really does overwhelm me. And I'm getting that same feeling where spirit is going to direct me to say a certain, you know, certain things that I'm feeling and remind and tell me to tell you guys certain things that I've already said or things that need to be said, but they are now protecting me from, well, have always protecting me from feeling too much or taking on too much because that wouldn't be good for my my well-being but spirit is reminding me to talk to you guys about the health and if someone i've been talking about this a lot on my youtube channel for the last two and a half months I'm, i was seeing something kind of pushing over into territory that is like red zone orange zone you know and what does that mean that means like you're you can't put this off for any longer if you haven't taken if you haven't gotten help for it, if you keep avoiding taking care of this, it, it can rupture. It's something that is over processing, overdoing. If you're not drinking enough water and you're drinking, you're eating things that are too fatty, too sugary, your body can only take so much. Let's say if you're drinking too much alcohol, the, the new moon in Taurus is going to highlight, I don't know why, the overindulgence of a something. As I'm saying that, we have Saturn. The first thing I wanted to look at was Saturn sitting in the sign of Aquarius. So squaring off with um, the North Node, falling in the sign of Taurus as well. Um, there's this hyper-focus on infection in the body, high, too much, too much. Um, tension in the head, tension in the jaws, too much, too much pressure or too little pressure. It's like this swing, swings up, swings down. Um, one area of your life is overly saturated or one area of your body is overly saturated. The other side of your body is like dry, not getting enough, okay? So this is where it's coming. It's like the temperance reverse is kind of what it is that I'm getting. So you guys really need to take care of this and take your health very, 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 very seriously. As I'm saying that, now that I'm looking, we have Jupiter and Venus conjunct. Um, also in the sign of Neptune, guys, this is just too, this is going to be too much for the body. Like if you're over drinking, overdoing, over too much fatty, too much, you know, you know what your thing is. You've got, you cannot do that anymore. Period. Like I'm, we're not going, this is again, like this is not a YouTube channel that, you know, throws feathers in your face and it's like, yay. Like it's, I'm going to tell you the truth. So um, this is one of those things that we just, we need to take care of it. Um, it's emotional eating, um, um, emotional overeating or eating things that, or substances, taking substances. It's overdoing something, you know, um, too fatty, too thick, too, too much, too, too much alcohol, too much. I don't know what this is. Um, you've been warned, right? So I don't see this rupturing at the time of the new moon. Fingers crossed that it doesn't. If something happens with your, I'm not trying to scare anybody, but typically energetically, if there's a, a, a health condition that is revealed during the new moon, it's going to be longer than that of a full moon, okay? So we want to make sure that we're resting. We want to make sure that we're hydrated. We want to make sure that we're, we're, taking care of our, our bodies, right? If you if you find that you physically are incapable of taking care of your body, um, 
do what you can, okay? A little goes a long way. So Spirit is definitely talking about that. Um, I do feel like if there's some type of health condition here, there's a lot of support from the spiritual realm. There's a lot of protection around the, that body, around your body, around your emotions. Some of you guys are, you cannot put off uh, any type of mental or emotional. Look at my chicken. She's such a good mama. Look at you. She's so cute. She's looking in. That's so funny. She's like, you do them diabetes? She's such a cute little chicken. Sorry, guys. I had chickens. <laughs> and also ADD. <laughs> I'm just kidding about that part. But, um, I mean, I might. <sighs> yeah, you, we don't, we don't want to put off mental health or emotional health issues for too long. Um, we want to reinforce the boundary. We don't want to enable toxic relationships, toxic, toxic connections. I'm also seeing, um, it's not bipolar, but emotions that kind of swing like extremes and something like too much over here and too little over here. So spirit really wants to kind of neutralize that at the time of the new moon, which I don't know if I said this, but it's April 30th. I have the chart pulled up for 4.44 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. That's I how I pulled the chart, all right? If you wanna know exact times, you can download my complete um, guide to 2022. I'll link it down in the description box along, as, oh, along with my predictions for the rest of the year, you know, in a weekly basis. I'm not here to self promote though, so let's just dive back into the chart. Um, something that's standing out to me is the fact that Mercury is moving into the sign of Gemini or had moved into the sign of Gemini at the time of the new moon. This is really standing out to me. Okay, so Spirit is talking to me about the extremes, these two different things and how much we want to balance and neutralize it. Neutralize it, stabilize it. Like, Spirit is saying we want things to work together better. We don't want one thing overdoing and then the other thing underdoing. Some of you guys are really needing right now whether you want to or not it you're you're really needing to focus on overproduction and underproduction so let's say in your relationships or let's say in your life you are you have a tendency to overgive or, or under and under receive that is going to be cut out spirit does not want you it's just it's going to wear you down there's this um emphasis on just too much and like re-emphasizing boundaries, re-emphasizing the rules. What are the rules? And at the time of the new moon in Taurus, again, this is April 30th, this is about you implementing these boundaries, these rules, this structure, this order in your life so that you have a routine that serves you and makes make sure that you're good, make sure that your business is good, make sure that your relationships are good, make sure that your friendships are good, make sure that your health is good. And you need to take it seriously. I do see this also, let's say someone is buying, interesting, we have flirt and it's safe for you to love. Let's say someone is buying luxury goods, but they're not investing in their diet, right? So you have a, a Chanel bag, but you're eating Taco Bell every other night. Like this, this is something that we need to work on. We have separation here, let go of control issues, forgiving and learning. Um, so this is getting your priorities straight, getting your priorities in order and learning, you know, if you continue, how long, if your life, all right, if your life continues the way that it is right now, at the time of the new moon, will, how will it pan out over time? Can you sustain this lifestyle six, 10, 20, 35 years from now? And if not, what needs to be adjusted? What needs to be reevaluated? And the thing is, is that Spirit is saying you can have all of the things that you want in your life, right? And that's, a, I gotta put a pin in that too because, well, let me just say it now. Um, what do you want in your life? Because there's certain things that you guys are doing or Spirit is saying, there's certain things that have been done that are not, you're, you might be doing it from a more toxic place, a darker place, right? We have the south node in the sign of Scorpio. So this has to do with, you know, the darker sides of yourself, the secrets, the shame, the guilt, the repression, the secrecy, the deeper psychology, the abandonment issues, the control, the power issues, 
This is you needing to have control and power in your life, but it actually put, puts you in a position of powerlessness. It could be addiction. It could be codependency. It could be, oh, I did say in the very beginning, hoarding the things that we won't allow ourselves to release, to let go of. We hold on to it because we're ashamed. We, we, we fear like we'll never experience. So we hold on to it in one area and it's totally not, seems like it's not connected, but it really comes from a, a darker shadow space. So at the time of the new moon in Taurus, this is about really examining that and nourishing that because some of the things that you guys are doing now, you, you say that you want it and maybe you do want it, but like, we want to switch the root, right? We want to switch the root. We want to we want to we want to make healthy soil here. We want to make good choices. We want to make fertile soil, not oh. Give yourself a chance. <laughs> Give yourself a chance. Like just if it's only that easy. I know. I'm with you. I'm human too. Didn't I say that in the beginning of this video? I'm human too. What secrets do I have? Mm, I'll share a secret with you guys. I'll share a secret with you guys if you promise to mark, heed my words. I'm scared! I'm scared, okay. I'll share a secret with you guys if you promise to follow the advice of this video because if I put myself out there, damn, I can't believe I'm doing this, all right. If I put myself out there, I just want us all to be, and I just, I just, I fucking love you guys, and I love our community, and I love our thing, and I just want us all to be good, and I just feel it in my belly, right? So I have, you promise? Promise. All right. I have, I, all right. This is a secret. I feel like it's a good time to, you know? All right, so, and Spirit's just telling me to do this. So I have... I grew up, you know, in a, you know, broken, I mean, who didn't like broken home, stuff like that. And I fucking, you know, I, as a kid, every year we were in, I was in a new place, you know, and I have, this is not even that serious, but it is because it, it shaped me and shaped my childhood and shaped my faith in God. That was a positive, but I hate being super positive, but, um, all the time i'm a virgo like a lot of virgo in my chart so i like to be realistic um but i have you know issues with things switching around me too fast i don't like surprises i don't like change and i i need to have support and stability or i'm gonna be it's gonna threaten me like it, it'll immediately threaten me and i if there's a change or a shift it sends me into lockdown mode and I will, it's funny, maybe this is why I'm being called to share this, like hoard, meaning like, not that I hoard physical, but I hoard, like I hoard the energy. Like I, I do not want it to change. I don't want it to, I don't like surprises. I don't like shifts. And at the same time, I will look for masculine, um, AKA dad, you know, it's daddy issues at the end of the day. Like who doesn't have that? Like if you don't comment it down below, like you're one of the chosen ones, how does it feel to be God's favorite? Right. I'm just kidding. But so I will look for, because my dad was always somewhat, my dad's a Virgo. So he's very, he's very similar to me and I connect to his, his, you know, consistency, his stability, his, um, stoic energy, his practical, critical uh, nature. And I look for that in external things, but I'm working on developing that for myself internally. And if I feel a change, even a slight fucking change, um, in my environment, I will lock everything down, like lock it all down. This could be like, let's say I get a large sum of money or if I have to spend, I will a lot, you know, or even like a medium amount. Um, I will lock everything down because I will wait until I feel stable stabilized and I processed it and I feel safe again. So one thing that I've been, that seems like it's not a, a big problem and I don't like, I just don't look at things as a, a good problem or a bad problem. I just look at it as, as for it is what it is. But I've started realizing because I, and especially since I bought my house that 
I thought when I, that because when I was a child, I wanted a home, you know, I wanted, I didn't like change. And all I knew was moving on. All I knew was picking up, you know, I never really totally felt like I unpacked things, you know, or just rooted myself. I felt like my home was my bag, meaning like my purse or my book bag. I carry my whole world in there because that's what I can count on. That's my safe space. Um, or like three Tupperware bins, you guys, I'm not even kidding. So I felt when I bought my home that this was everything for me. I like, I thought like, especially after my New Orleans trip, I thought this was gonna be everything for me. I thought that I was gonna finally have all of the pieces fall together and I was gonna be at home within my, like at home, period. I was gonna have this feeling of home. And then I realized that it wasn't my external. And I know that sounds so fucking cliche, but it's easy to read it, it's easy to see it, but it's a different thing to experience it and to unwind all of what you've energetically become used to and your core beliefs. And even as a spiritual being, I understood it, but my human self didn't sit with it well. It wasn't accepting it. It was waiting for a feeling that wouldn't come because it, the feeling would not come from an external thing. It would have to come from an internal belief and an internal acceptance, an internal change, an internal shift. So when I got my house, dude, I was like, yo, this this is where I live now. And I was so shocked when I didn't have the feeling of, oh, home. I was ready to actually pick up and move on. And I was feeling this, you know, craziness, you know, within myself. And I also knew if you looked at my astrological chart, you would see within my relationships and stuff that, I would have a long list of things to work on in order to ultimately manifest the relationship and the life that I saw for myself. But if I stayed who I was, there was no way I would be able to um, not thrive in that environment, but I wouldn't be able to sustain it. You know what I mean? Because I didn't have the tools and the resources in order to keep up with this because in a, in a sense, I'm dysfunctional, you know, I'm wobbly. So from the jump, when I started dating, I would um, speak to spirit and be like, okay, this is what I need to work on next. So I would always manifest these relationships looking for something very similar to what I saw within my, you know, my, my father, like, and, and my, and my, my, you know, the spontaneity of my mother, like things that it is that I wanted for myself, things that I believed about myself, but I would manifest these relationships to teach me these lessons. And then finally, when I mastered them and learned, and I just was so beaten down by the process of manifesting these lessons and crossing them off my list that when I'm finally ready, I'm like, yeah, no, we're good. <laughs> and then again, I had to sit with myself and realize that feeling of safety and support is never going to come from an external thing. It's going to have to come from internal. And I'm like, well, you know, how do I do that? And then when spirit sat with me and was just like, well, girl, you just got to be still. And I'm like, yeah, so that's the one thing I don't know how to do. Um, and that, that, so that's my secret. I don't know if that's a secret, but it's a, it's my, it's a major point of growth for me. It's been a major still is very transformative and I'm proud of my progress. If you would have seen me before and look at me now, you're, it would be two different people. I was just saying this to my friend the other day. We were just driving back from Steve Aoki um, concert. I love her to death. Kemper, if you're watching, I, I fucks with you hard, girl. You are such a gem in everyone's life, man. Just You are just such a gem. But I was telling her, like, if I was to tell my whole story, like, people would not believe me because they would just be like, yo, this girl's making it up. And I'm just like, I don't even like talking about it, but we, the moral of the story is we all have our own stories and Taurus <laughs> to bring it back to you guys. Now, if I told you my secret, you have to at least promise to do this. Just promise me, you know, and it's not even for me. It's for just all of us. Like I just, ugh. I just, I really do bang with you guys pretty hard and I just, I love you guys and I want to make sure that we're all good and I want you to know, we, you know, we have a safe space here and I'm not perfect, neither are you, but we, at least we have each other, right? Right? Um, but Taurus, you know, New Moon and Taurus is really about the root. It's about safety. It's about comfort. It's about 
what do I need? What do I want? What type of life am I living? And digging that hole, putting in the compost, or putting down the cement, like what are you building in that hole? What are you hiding in that hole? And creating the rituals, the routines, the boundaries, the blessings, the opportunity, the openness, the receptivity that is going to feed what you actually need, not just what you want. And I believe that at the time of this new moon, this is an amazing time for us to step out of and unplug from and disconnect from the ability to receive something very fast, superficial, fake, inauthentic, quick, microwavable, and tap into a deeper sense of source that will provide a sense of peace and belonging and worth and value that you are worthy of and you may have been held back from for too long. And from that soil, we are going to set the intention that this seed of peace, this seed of plenty, this seed of true abundance, man, not just material, not just superficial, just on a real deep, I need this. I need this. This is who I am. These are my needs. Even things that I don't understand about myself, but spirit knows better than I do. That is what I want to grow. And I will honor and I will open up and I will listen and I will learn and I will receive what I need to receive in order to gain what I've been needing for so long. And yes, Taurus represents superficial. And yes, Taurus represents good and luxury. But I, I do believe that the true peace and the true source of a really awesome life is by tapping into the abundance of the universe and the abundance of peace that can only come from a higher power from the divine and not from just our own understanding, our own perceptive perceptions of things. I think that's why I was called to share that story just now because I feel like a lot of you guys can relate to it in your own way. And my promise, if I can put myself out there as private as I am, and you guys know I'm private as fuck, as private as I am, and if I can put out my a little piece of my thing that has I've been working on, I just want you to promise to sit with God for 22 minutes or 23 minutes or longer, an hour, and have that conversation at the time of the new moon, again, April 30th, 444. Well, I have the chart pulled for 444 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, but you do you, boo. Okay? Find the time in your schedule that works for you. All right? But to sit and ask spirit, I want real, true stability, security, luxury, peace, comfort, safety in my life. I want what I need. I want what I need, and you know what I need. Give that to me. And I will let go of my own dysfunction. I'll let go of my own shame. I'll let go of my own embarrassment. I'll let go of my own guilt. I'll let go of my own expectations of what I see, what I fear, feel, what I hear, what I fear, what I know, what I don't know. I'll let go of all of that in exchange for what I truly, truly need on a deeper level because I want a life of value. And I believe that should be the seed that we're planting at the time of the new moon. <laughs> yep. I love you guys. If you need me, I will be, per usual, working in the apothecary at bahadilife.com. That's my home base, happily. And I'm also whipping beauty butters 
Ooh, girl, you wanna know where I'm gonna be this weekend? At Carnival, Caribbean Carnival. Um, I'm gonna have feathers and my butt out and my boobs out and just hanging out, marching with my mom, dancing with my mom and, and friends. So there will be, it's either Saturday or Sunday, I can't remember, but one of those days I'm gonna be off the radar because I'm just gonna be playing, you know, just dancing, that's kind of what I do. And I love dancing, I love music, I love, you know, good food, good people, good culture, and like that's just my, my, my family's from the islands, so, well, part of my family. Um, so yeah, so the moral of the story is either Saturday or Sunday, I can't remember because my schedule is just like wild. Um, but I will be off the radar, but for the, any part of that, outside of that, I'm gonna be packing orders, I'm gonna be working on whipping up body butters. Virgo, my Virgo, my Mars is in Virgo, so some of you guys are like, how do you do it? It's my Mars in Virgo. I just do, like I just, I just work, you know, I just, I love it. If I didn't work, I don't, I would just, my hobbies are working. Like people are like, how do you take care of your chickens? Like, how do you take care of your animals? Virgo rules farm life. Like it rules the small farm life. So it's like the, my chickens and all of that makes me so happy because I love cleaning. Like <laughs> I'll be out there cleaning the coop and then people are like, that makes you happy? Like, yeah, dude, you have no idea. Like it really does. Taking care of my plants makes me happy. Going to a EDM or house concert makes me happy because I just allow my spirit to just soar and dance and just rage. Um, yeah, so. What's the keyword? All right, what's the keyword? The keyword is Ooh. The keyword is, and the power word is, and the affirmation is the grace of spirit soaks within me. Soaks within me. The grace of spirit soaks within me or into me. Or spirit's grace soaks into me. I don't know why that feels like a rainstorm, like a rain shower over a, a plant that is ready to grow and ready to soar and ready to absorb all that delicious, refreshing nourishment. So comment that down below, guys. <laughs> in the comments if this video helped you in any way shape or form please do it, it it's it's i share these words because it does give back but more than that it does have i'm really big i'm virgo i'm a witch i'm a manifester so those words are very powerful and you can incite that magic you can ignite that magic by speaking it out by commenting it by writing it and that's why we write intentions. That's why we write petitions. That's why we speak to God. That's why we pray. So yes. And for those of you guys that are going to be looking for a luxurious, high intention manifesting oil at the time of the new moon, it will be provided for you. Oh, Saturday. Saturday, let's figure this out. Saturday, April, well, you know what? I will be able to. Yeah, because I'm not, I'll be out during the day, but I won't. I'll be relaxing during the night and I'll be out. Yeah, um, I will provide a link for you to reserve the Tur Taurus New Moon Intention Oil. A lot of you guys have been asking for it. You guys miss it and I understand. I've just been, you know, busy um, and balanced. But I will link it down below for those of you guys that do want to set intention for or to manifest or to work with this new moon's energy for the remainder of the year that that oil will not expire you can use it to anoint your petition papers you can use it to anoint your body you can use it to anoint your crystals your cards 
bless your, your family when you rub it on your hand and just doop, put it on their, you know, their body when you give them hugs and stuff like that. It does as, act as a, as a blessing. Okay, so you can find that within the apothecary, but I'll also link it down below. In the meantime, I'm sending you guys all my love. Don't forget to leave that power comment, that power affirmation down below in the comments. And I will see you guys in my next video. <laughs> Bye. You were created to live a life of magic, abundance, love, and blessing all of which will be up to you to call into your life with perfect divine timing. Mahati Life Apothecary is the magical home of Jessica Alexandria, where you will find a wide variety of mystical items to help you to manifest your heart's truest desires, as well as tools to help you tap into your unlimited spiritual potential. Browse the online apothecary and find hand-fixed candles to magnetize your intentions towards you, You'll find thyme and star-soaked conjure oils charged to anoint your petitions, your body, and personal magical items. You'll also find the highest quality of herbs for creating your own potions and concoctions, and even reserve time and space with Jessica Alexandria herself, who will work with you to create something special and truly yours. Each item found within the apothecary are created with intention in alignment with the movement of the stars to make them even more powerful totems to bring into your own sacred space. Visit BahadiLife.com to browse the apothecary and don't forget to follow Jessica on Instagram at BahadiLife where she posts daily messages to uplift, inspire, empower, and to remind you of your magical potential along your magical journey. Blessings to each and every one of you. I'll see you there.